Welcome comic book fans to Potbelly Gamers hashtag pull this for Wednesday, May 24th, 2017. I'm your host, Glenn Kremp, aka Leaps in Six, and these are the top choices of comics released this week. All right, this week we're going to start with the big Marvel Venom 150th comic. A pretty good supersized issue. We get three Venom stories in this one. The first story does show us how the Venom symbiote comes back to Eddie Brock, which is a really cool story. We do have him trying, Eddie Brock trying to be the hero or wanting to be the hero as he starts to break up a burglary in progress. Um, unfortunately, the Venom, Venom symbiote, ah, I can't say those words, uh, does take control of them. We get a lot of it, a lot of story happening here. We do get Eddie Brock returning to the church where everything happened, where Spider-Man refused it and where first Eddie Brock had it take him over. Um, and then we get a nice big fight from the Scorpion. Scorpion comes in. Great fight between Venom and Scorpion there. Uh, Scorpion does somewhat beat uh, Venom. Venom takes then Eddie Brock back to the church to kind of heal him up. And that's where we learn that Venom symbiote actually plans on making him back to evil and not what Eddie Brock wants is making him a hero. So really interesting on how the Venom storylines are going to go forward from this point. The second story is really good as well. And the second story in this book shows us how Flash Thompson lost the Venom symbiote. We have a lot going on there, which that storyline leads us into where the 2017 Flash number one, the person who had the, the symbiote at that point, we see how he got it. Um, overall, great artwork. I really enjoyed the story. Um, also in this comic, we get a nice page spread of all 100 and 50 covers of Venom to lead us up to this, which is always fun to go look at, seeing all those old comic covers, which I really enjoy. And then the third story is just uh, kind of an old school tale, taking it back to the originals. Um, it's drawn in that very dotted style comic uh, style. Uh, just an old tale of Eddie Brock in a mall helping to people there as well. Good, just a good, the first two stories though were really worth this comic to show where the Venom is going and where it came from. To also top off the Venom news this week, we also got the announcement that Tom Hardy from Bane fame is going to play Venom in the upcoming movie as well. So a really big week for Venom and Venom fans. Next up for Marvel, Steve Rogers, Captain America number 17. As we've seen in Secret War number two that came out last week, we didn't really get much of Steve Rogers and him being in charge of Hydra. This comic is all about Hydra and really shows how Hydra and Steve Rogers have planned everything in the now United States of Hydra or of America. Um, we get a very detailed look of what's going on in this comic. Um, he sits down for an interview with the famous reporter Sally Floyd, if you may remember her from uh, the Civil War series. She did a lot of interviews with him during that comic series as well. And this takes us on to how Captain America has set up the United States now as him, as him being Supreme Leader of Hydra. We see that he does have a plan for the mutants. He gets together with Magneto and he gives them, I believe it's called Tyan, uh, which is the former area of California. So that whole entire state can be for the mutants. There's a really great exchange of how he plans to kind of give that to Magneto to have. And he even tells Magneto the whole time, hey, I know we are going to go to war. It is going to be crazy, but you are going to accept this deal that I'm giving you. And we do have a really awesome page spread in that of the gift of Steve Rogers that he gives to Magneto, which is the head of the Red Skull. And where that plays into very important parts is if you may remember back from, I want to say the 1989 comic series, I believe it's Acts of Vengeance. Um, we did have Magneto that captured the real Red Skull. And as you can figure out from these parts, he did capture and puts him in a jail cell. But some of the interesting words from that was, hey, uh, you know, Red Skull being the part of the so-called Nazi area and obviously Magneto, Eric, having what he had done to him as a kid, 
just really symbolized what happened in this comic all that much more. Um, we also, in this comic, find out what's happened to the Inhumans, what's going on with them, uh, the control Steve Rogers has over New York and the powers being on in there. Um, really good. It's very, almost uh, really setting up how deep uh, Marvel has gone with the Secret Empire storyline and how much this truly does affect um, the Marvel Universe. A really good read, very deep and interesting in thought. Also in this comic with the Sally Floyd interview, at the very beginning of it, we are, uh, Dr. Phosphorus does tell her do not mention Las Vegas at all. And she kind of, the, the interview starts to get heated at the end and the last thing she brings up to Steve Rogers is what happens in Vegas. And what's really crazy is she does kind of uh, mention to Steve Rogers that he seems to be out of touch and talking about Twitter and stuff like that. And it's really funny, she mentions it, uh, Hydra throws her in jail and she is saying, hey, people will be concerned about me. And I like Captain America's throwaway to her, like what, your followers on Twitter? Just a really interesting thing to show the control Hydra now has on the United States. And again from Marvel, another great title for Marvel this week, Infamous Iron Man number eight. This is a really great story going on in here too. And this comic plays on two parallels. One, we have Doctor Doom with Riri Williams as Iron Man back at Doom Castle confronting her. And on the second half of the story going on, we have Ben Grimm, who's a S.H.I.E.L.D. investigator. He's found Reed Richards, which we look at like a dark Reed Richards. And we have their storyline going on as well. It's a really great story. Reed Richards is trying to convince Ben, the thing, that it is really him telling him an old story of what happened to them long ago to convince him that it is me, or it is him, Reed Richards. And on the flip half of that, we do have Doctor Doom talking to Riri Williams, really like letting her know that, you know, I can defeat you. I know all of Tony Stark's armor and all that stuff. Um, that was a really good scenario as well. He's Doctor Doom's trying to explain to Reed Williams that he's seen another plane, and if he can get to this comatose state, he can see it again. And he encourages Riri Williams to uh, kind of shoot him or hit him. And he, he's telling her what levels to put your blasters at to hit me. He does, She does hit him, knocks him back into this state. And it's a really amazing discovery at the end of this. We don't know where this comic is going. But we at the end of this comic, we have Tony Stark in a weird, I want to say, Doctor Strange-esque uh, setting where he looks very old and lots of knowledge or something like that but the way this comic ended was really crazy but i do i do recommend that just for the the dialogue that bendis did do between all four characters in here making it two separate storylines a really interesting read and really excited to see where this is going as we kind of are starting to get a lot some fantastic four storylines back into marvel <laughs> oh you know what that means that's right quick hits just a Quick recap of some of the other comics that came out this week. Suicide Squad number 18, talk about crazy. So as we know from the last Suicide Squad comic, Zod, Amanda Waller has taken Zod, put an implant in his brain and wants him to work for the Suicide Squad. But Zod is absolutely crazy and decides that he's gonna use his heat vision to literally etch it out of his brain. Absolutely, this comic, all it is is yelling and fighting. It's an awesome read. The artwork is absolutely phenomenal as well. A really fun read this week. Detective Comics number 957. Also another good read where this is just actually all spoiler. And just her kind of, like everyone else, kind of not against how Batman does things. She goes out and wants to take on Wraith himself. And shows that she can do it as well because she's sick of how Batman kind of does anything. A really good detective comic read this week. And last, we got Deathstroke number 19, which is the Lazarus Contract Part 3, where Deathstroke, Slade Wilson, is looking for his son and he wants to prevent his son's death now that he has the flash power. Well, guess what? At the end of this comic, he reunites with his son. A really great full page spread of that. Great artwork in this comic as well. And that's my pull list for this week. As always, please tune into our podcast, Pop Ellie Gamers. We are on the allgames.com radio network. We are live every Friday night from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. To this Friday is going to be our big 
TV series recap shows. We're going to go over all the TV shows as they start to go ending into the summer months. Flash season finale was crazy. We're going to talk about that. Hopefully get into Ages of Shields and some of the other shows as plus some of the trailers that came out. Arrow is tonight as well. Please tune in for that. I also want to thank Washikong for their support. Please visit their site, washikong.com, for great toys and apparel and online comics as well. And as always, please support your local comic book shops. Without them, we wouldn't even be able to get these great titles that we can every week. Thank you. See you next week.